Hey everyone. So last week we were massively focused on Microsoft Azure and it's really not going to stop this week. Um, I think what, what, so last week we touched on protecting your data or protecting your work, IaaS workloads within Azure. Um, we talked about how we could get your workloads to Azure from on-premises, from traditional image-based backups, from VMware, from Hyper-V, from Nutanix, from physical machines, from Windows, Linux, etc. And then we also talked about how do we how do we leverage the public cloud or, or Microsoft Azure Blob Storage to to store longer term retention or to have an offsite copy of that that data. And then what I want to do this week is really focus in on another Azure set or another Microsoft service, as it were. So Microsoft three six five, the new the new name for Microsoft Office. 365 or Office 365 and I want to specifically talk about what we do there from a Veeam standpoint in terms of data management when it comes to protecting those Office 365 uh, SaaS based workloads that you have and in particular I wanted to kick off with actually you can deploy our Veeam backup for Microsoft, oh, <laughs> Microsoft 365 within the Azure marketplace. And this is a pretty new thing and I don't think we've pretty much, well, we haven't really shouted about it. So first of all, if we go and have a search for the marketplace and we search for Veeam, I think the first thing to note is that there's getting quite a big list of things in here. Um, obviously last week we added that Veeam backup for Microsoft Azure free and the bring your own license. Also, you've got the VPN, which is our VPN, um, so our private network in between, which is using wire gauge to to um, to connect in to have a, give yourself a, a connectivity between sites, if you will. Um, you'll also see Veeam backup for uh, sorry Veeam backup replication nine point five, which is actually a Windows machine that spins it up. In the last video, you saw me use something very similar, but I actually rolled my own, which is obviously a something you can do and also things like service provider console um, veeam cloud connect for anyone that wants to spin up and offer a service out to your to your um, tenants but the one that we want to pick today is this veeam backup for microsoft office 365 and the interesting thing today is well i haven't deployed this from here so anything could go or anything could happen not anything will go wrong because i'm pretty sure it should be pretty simple to to deploy so you saw there that i chose being back up for microsoft office 365 i'm not sure what we're going to do from a naming point of view as microsoft changed their name to or changed the name to microsoft 365 i believe um but given we, we've got the marketplace piece so we choose our subscription that we'd like it to be in for this for purposes of this i'm going to choose just a resource group vzilla we're going to call it uh vzilla VBO because I'm pretty sure no one else is going to have done that. Um, let's stick with what we know and stick that in US East. Availability options, image. Again, we can, well, you can change the availability options, the image, well, unless you want to change what image you actually want to be deploying. Um, what, what do we want in terms of size? This isn't going to stay around very long because it's my credit card that I'm using. And then let's give it some sort of account that will be gone by the time you're watching this video. And let's try and meet the demands of Microsoft Azure and their accounts. Um, let's leave everything else as default, inbound, etc. Premium SSD, yes. Data disks, no. Networking. Okay, let's let's choose a specific VZilla VNet. Let's choose our default subnet. Public IP, again, this will be gone, but again, just for purposes of the demo, let's leave it like that. Select your inbound rules, yet yeah, because we want to be able to RDP to it, because ultimately this is going to be a Windows machine running in, um, running in Microsoft Azure. Um, boot diagnostics. Where do we want the diagnostics to be stored? Let's say in this particular diag bucket or container that I've got within my cloud storage. 
Do we want it to automatically shut down? I'm still, I still think this feature is is a real, real good, real good thing. Um, anything else advanced that we want to do? Things like tags that we want to run. Maybe we want our own Beam Backup for Azure to actually back this up. So let's add a tag in there. I'm not going to bother for this demo because it will be gone straight after. And it's going to give you a summary of how much it's going to cost per hour. And a summary of what it's going to actually create. Let's hit create because we might be waiting for a couple of minutes whilst this actually goes away and does that deployment. Yeah, so... As a standalone download and deployment, uh, Veeam Backup for Office 365 is really not very big at all. In fact, it's meg in terms of how, how big the deployment or the, the software is. I think by adding this into the Azure Marketplace, though, it gives you that ease of being able to spin up the, the, the resource and be able to start protecting your Office 365 workloads as, as fast as possible if you choose to keep everything within Azure. Now, I've done other various demos across the line where it really doesn't matter where your Office 365, um, or where your Veeam backup for Office 365 resides, whether it's on-premises as a virtual machine, a physical, etc. I think before the last version that came out that required it to be a local disk so that we could store the data, I think that obviously limited where where you would store that potentially. Um, but now with the new version that was probably the back end of last year now, or at least maybe the beginning of the year, is gives us the ability to back up directly to object storage. Now, that's not a, an object storage that has to be Microsoft Azure Blob storage. It doesn't have to be anything in particular, but it just needs to be that S3 compatible. It could be AWS S3, it could be Microsoft Azure Blob, it could be IBM Cloud, basically the same um, options that we have within Veeam Backup Replication. And what that means is that now this VM that is going to manage, whether it's an Azure VM, whether it's an infrastructure VM or physical, it means that this is a little bit more portable because we're only really having the, the operating system and the, the Veeam Backup for Office 365 installation to worry about. So Another demo that I'll, I'll try and do before the end of the week is actually, okay, so we're deploying today in here. What about bringing that back to on-premises for, for whatever reason? It might be whatever that might be. So there you go. You saw how quick that was to deploy. You can see that I've got my um, IP address. Let me just make sure that I put in the right password I should be able to get to this now let's do this and if I remember the password then we should be in to this new machine and remember oh good stuff good start yeah remember this is the first time that I've actually deployed from the Azure marketplace as well this this instance Right, okay, so I'll do some scaling so that you guys can actually see. Okay, so you can see that this is a, you can see that that was a forward facing IP. You can see that everything's coming up here. You can actually see as well that we've got our Office 365 installation already in. And now I imagine what we've got to do, and maybe this is another video for another time, but I just wanna show actually how, how simple this is. Sorry for the scaling. This is a massive monitor for what I'm trying to achieve and I should have set this up. And um, another thing to mention, so when you first actually deploy this, you get the Veeam backup for Microsoft Office 365 Community Edition and you get the chance to add a paid for license. Now, I don't want to add a license, but this is where you do that. So anyone that just wants to look at what the capabilities are from a Veeam backup for Microsoft Office 365, we can jump in here and you can start protecting up to 10 users um, straight off the bat. I think that's a that's a pretty um, cool, cool thing that we've got as well. So 
let's just manipulate this so it actually fits in the screen. And then what we'll do is very quickly, if I can remember my details, I will quickly add in Okay, sorry about that. I've sorted out the resolution because it was getting on my nerves um, and I actually had to go and find out what the, what some of the uh, username was for my VBO. He says, as he still obviously didn't pick that up. Again, all very brand new for me as well. And I'm trying to do it on the fly just to, well, really to show how simple things are. So hopefully that's copied. If not, these are on Microsoft. Yeah, we can easily remember that. So let's go back into this and perfect. So michael.cade at vzilla.onmicrosoft.com Let's see if that password works. Okay, so that's a good sign if we've connected to Microsoft Graph at least. So pretty much there, you've been pretty much live with me all the way apart from obviously sorting out the, the RDP and I picked up where I left off. Is that, so I've added my organization in and now we can start to back that up if we actually went through. So here I've got what the version I'm running. I've got a, so my advice here is that you probably won't want to back up to the C drive. Now, the Azure Virtual Machine is going to have a level of storage locally. Right, it's going to have like quite a large C drive, so you could, depending on the size of your environment within Office 365, there's probably some space there. But my advice would be actually go into here, add in your object storage that you wish to use, and and this is again, this is really just to show you. So we can choose which we want. So it might be and. Bear in mind where this virtual machine resides. So if you're going to then use an AWS S3 bucket, the data is going to leave Microsoft Azure. So I think the premise for this would be use Microsoft Azure Blob Storage. And you can go in here and in a very similar fashion to what you would do within VBR for that matter. Maybe maybe we pick up tomorrow in the next, next session here is a bit more around the configuration um, of of vbo but it looks and feels exactly the same it's going to get auto powered down because that's what we said as part of the configuration you chose what that virtual machine needs to look like we'll touch on a bit more around actually adding the backup jobs etc but yeah i think it's worth knowing that if you're exploring backup for your sas based workloads in specifically Microsoft 365, then Veeam is a very easy way of, of spinning up a, an Azure VM and getting something off the get, getting something in there so that you can you can start protecting that workload. Um, yeah, any questions or comments? Maybe even if anyone has actually used the Azure um, deployment method created a virtual machine that sits in Azure, it gets auto powered up and down when, when the job requires that during the time that's, that's said. Um, yeah, leave a comment below or alternatively find me on Twitter at MichaelCade1 and yeah, any questions. And I think what we'll do next is we'll have a look, a bit deeper look into the installation configuration of what we can do. Um, I'll also link a blog post that I've done or a blog series that I've done around Veeam Backup for Office 365. At the beginning of the year, 
and this is a very shameful thing being in the position that I'm in, is this was the maybe the second time that I actually installed. So this is probably the third time I installed Office 365 from Veeam. But um, yeah, some of the, the blogs that I wrote were very much a 101 and, and what we have from a version 4 product. Um, with that, thanks guys, and I will uh, speak to you soon. Thank you.